Hi, I'm Chloe from Inner Whispers and in this third video in the Learn Lenormand series we're going to look at the cards from the snake to the birds. So here are some images for the snake card from the Wings of Change Lenormand and the Celtic Lenormand and here are the questions for the snake. How would you describe a snake's movement? What does the snake represent in the Bible? And who is it associated with? What is the snake's response to being attacked? Remember, you can pause at any time to take a while to think about these questions for yourself. Otherwise, let's move on. Thinking about how you describe a snake's movement, snakes wend their way along the ground, leaving sort of slidey patterns on the floor. And so this card is often associated with the idea of winding of things that are that kind of shape. shape. For example, in terms of form, it could represent uh, cabling or plumbing, that kind of thing. And it's also about your path perhaps in life being a little bit winding. Um, the snake also lays down a trail when it does that. And so because it's sort of laying down a line in the sand, drawing a line in the sand, the card is also associated with boundaries and making those clear, which is quite a nice meaning for it. In terms of what the snake represents in the Bible, of course the snake was the temptation that guided Eve to encourage Adam to eat the fruits of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And so it's associated with Eve and with the idea of temptation. And bringing these two symbolic meanings together, this card is often associated with a woman who may be a temptress or a seductress. It's sometimes seen as the other woman. And this also links with the playing card association to the Queen of Clubs. As for the snake's response to being attacked, well obviously the snake can be very fierce when it's attacked. And not only that, but if it bites you, some snakes are poisonous. And so those are another two meanings that are associated with this card. If we look to the key words, we see those things of woman and temptation, but also the idea of betrayal, sarcasm, biting wit perhaps. Falsity lies, the snake can sort of lie hidden in the grass and then rear up to bite you. But it's also associated with detours, as I said, kind of that wendingness, and also with intelligence. As a woman, it might sometimes be seen very traditionally as a dark haired woman and an intelligent woman. In the spiritual side, I think the the ideas of clear boundaries and a winding path are perhaps most important. And in terms of health, we have things like the small, excuse me, the small and large intestines and the umbilical cord. If we look to some images of the coffin, here from the Celtic Lenormand and then the Kindergarten Lenormand, and then more traditionally here, this one from the Wings of Change Lenormand, we have the questions, when is a coffin used? What comes before? What form does a coffin have? And what does the phrase dead and buried make you think about? So a coffin is used clearly when somebody has died and when we think about what went before, well it's not always the case but there can quite often be an association with a long-term sickness that has led up to this death, or being ill before you die. And the coffin is associated with both of those things. It can be quite literally a card of death, though that's obviously not something that you want to predict every day in your readings. And it can also be a card of chronic sickness, ongoing sickness, long-lasting sickness. And it is just generally ill health as well. If you think about the form of a coffin, it is in the shape of a box and so this can be at a form level of interpretation about for example something like a drawer or a box uh, perhaps a jewellery box if it's combined with the ring for example. Uh, the phrase dead and buried clearly is about things being over in a very final way 
And so at a milder level with this card, it can of course be milder illnesses and also the ending of something. So it is that sense of ending and completion, which we might sometimes buck against as humans. We often don't like change, but it can be a good thing as well if something is totally and finally and completely over or finished, those kinds of ideas around it. So if we turn to the key words, we saw, see all of those, this idea of sickness and ending. Also the idea that perhaps we need to do some mourning. There can be some emptiness there. And also stagnation and negativity. Something dead obviously will stagnate. And these descriptors of finishing, finally and gone. As I say, the form of a box, a drawer, a dustbin or any kind of sealed container. And in terms of health, the card represents the spinal column, disease, burnout, psychic trauma and a disease that ends badly leaving traces. If we turn to look at the bouquet or the flowers as it's sometimes called, the questions here would include how would you describe a bouquet of flowers, what are flowers used for and what is required of you to put together a bouquet. You may notice here once again, I use the Kindergarten Lenormand cards for a card which is also a court card. So we have here the association to the Queen of Spades, and so this can be associated to a woman. She's often seen as someone who is diplomatic or charming, and that kind of fits with some of the other questions that we had there. How would you describe a bouquet of flowers? Well, hopefully it would be beautiful appealing, those would be words that you could use if you're describing a person with this as well. What are flowers used for? Well they're often given as a gift, so a flower can be about a gift. They were also for example used as a corsage that a woman would wear or men also have kind of the flowers in their buttonholes. So it can also be about um, an invitation. If you were given a corsage, that was a way of inviting you to the event where you would wear that corsage. And what is required of you to put together a bouquet? Well, having tried this for myself, I can say it takes quite a lot of creativity um, and skill, perhaps, to put together a bouquet in a way that really is appealing. And so this is about a certain level of artistic creativity, perhaps, in order to make something beautiful. So that connects with the key word of beauty. How do you do it? Through creativity. And in terms of health, we might see things here about, for example, flower essences or homeopathy more generally. And if it was paired with the coffin, so it is suggesting an illness that's related to flowers, then that would be hay fever. In more detail, we have things like gift, beauty, grace as well is another one, acknowledgement, happiness, pampering. And I find the cosmetics one very interesting. Obviously if something is pretty, it can be cosmetics that help us with that. And as a descriptor, it can be cosmetic with a slight idea that it's purely superficial in that sense. So if you combined it with the house, it might be making some changes to your house, but they would be purely cosmetic ones rather than actually remedying the dry rot in your wall, for example. As a person, as I say, it is a female, and uh, traditionally she was seen as a younger sister, a female relation with blonde to light blonde hair, but I think it may be more useful to think of those things such as uh, charming um, and diplomatic as well is an interesting one. In terms of health, as well as the things I mentioned, it can be connected with ulcers, growths and tumours. Never been quite sure where those connections come from, but those are some of the traditional meanings for it. If we turn next to look at the scythe, we have here some more images of that. And the questions for the scythe include, what is a scythe? What is it used for? When is a scythe used? How would you describe a scythe? And what characteristics would a scythe person have? So clearly a scythe is a tool that is used for harvesting. In that sense it can be used for any kind of tool. And it is a bladed tool, so it is sharp. 
um, that gives us keywords such as sharp and cutting. And when you harvest, that's kind of about harvesting, gathering things in, and when you gather them you also have to sort them. If you think about harvesting wheat, you then have to separate the wheat from the chaff. So sorting can be another key word for the scythe. And if you think of it from the wheat's point of view, the scythe comes through and cuts it off very suddenly. So there's a suddenness to it, and there's a cuttingness, a shockingness, and the wheat is probably not very happy about it. Um, they do say that plants can feel pain and sort of scream when cut, so uh, there can be pain associated with it and shock. The scythe is used for a harvest, as I say, and describing a scythe, it's sharp, it's often, well, it's almost always metal, so those are some more descriptors for it. So if we think about a scythe type of person, this would be someone who is perhaps quite aggressive, um, quite shocking. They can also be quite incisive, cutting through things. And another um, key word for this can be passing a test, if you think of the, the expression making the cut. You make the cut when you achieve an exam. So that's another aspect of the scythe. Turning to look then at the key words, we have all of those, uh, including also the idea of sacrifice, separation, rejection, action. Cutting the harvest is something quite active. It's associated with tools generally, weapons, and particularly perhaps surgical equipment. So this can also represent a surgeon, someone who uses these kinds of tools, and an operation when you actually have those tools used on you. In terms of health as well as operations, it can be related to teeth, jaw, pain generally, injuries, and clean breaks. So if it's a break of a limb, you would associate it with something that's broken cleanly, finding the good even in the bad. Moving on to the whips card, sometimes called the birch rods, occasionally called the broom. In the Celtic Lenormand card we have birch rods which can be lifted up and wielded as a whip and can also be taken downwards and used as a broom, so it combines both of those. And if we look at the questions for that, what are whips or birch rods used for? How would you describe the movements to use them? What does the expression tongue lashing imply? And what about smart as a whip? So I've already sort of mentioned that whips or birch rods can be used as a whip, as something to hit someone or something. And they can also be used equally to sweep things away. The hitting side of it is perhaps the one that is more commonly used uh, with the whips or the birch rods um, in Lenormand readings, but it's good to not forget that there is that secondary use for it. And in terms of the kinds of movements associated with that, well it's very repetitive movements, whether you're sweeping or whether you're whipping, it is something that you would do over and over again. So it's associated with all kinds of repetitive movements. And in that sense, more particularly in the French school, but some people use it in this way from other schools as well, it can be used for the idea of exercise, so particularly where the exercise is repetitive. As for the question of what does a tongue lashing imply, well, clearly that's someone nagging or verbally aggressing you. And so this card can be used for discussions, especially discussions that get heated. It has the association to the Jack of Clubs, and so in that regard it could be used for a younger man who is aggressive, um, perhaps verbally quite abusive, or just, you know, who's quite biting with his tongue once again. This might almost be the pair to the snake in that regard. Um, but also the question of smart as a whip. So there is a certain intelligence behind this kind of um, speaking or way of discussing things. And it isn't always a negative card. It can be paired up and represent interviews, for example, somewhere where you have to speak and stay on your toes and be very aware of what you're saying, perhaps. 
So looking to the key words, we have things like arguments and tongue lashings. It does have this side of violence and conflict. And that repetitive side can also be used for things like addictions, where we repeat a behaviour over and over again. Um, and in particular, behaviours that harm ourselves. So it's combining the repetition with the side of kind of abuse or uh, violence. As I say, traditionally it's a young man with light blonde to reddish hair, if you find those kinds of associations useful. I think someone who's troubled or sharp-tongued is more culturally useful across the board. And spiritually we can talk about a trance, something that is done repeatedly to get you into a trance state, and also the idea of cleansing, which for example, whipping oneself was a way of cleansing, and repetitive things, or the broom, are also cleansing. For health, we have tendons, sinews, tongue, musculature, and on the more negative side, self-harm. Moving on to the card of the birds, we have a variety of images here. And the questions, what is the purpose of bird song? Do birds always sit together when singing? What emotions does the expression all a flutter imply? In terms of the purpose of bird song, it's clearly to communicate. Birds may mark their territory or inform one another of dangers, predators, so forth. So bird song is about communication, but especially verbal communication. And that's a very strong association with this card. It's also been developed and adapted to include telephone conversations, for example. Some people do associate it to tweets, especially seeing as the symbol for that is a bird. However, I personally would go more for that with the letter, because tweets do leave an imprint, as some celebrities have found to their dismay and others use to their advantage. So it does have more of that tangible side to it, and it is a written imprint, so I would go for the letter with tweets. But that's a choice, clearly. The question, do birds always sit together when they're singing? Um, you do quite often get birds together, so this card has traditional associations to a pair, or in the celtic Lenormand system, to three people together. But it can also be that birds sit separate, and so their communication is more long distance, which is perhaps where the, the telephone conversation connection came into it. As for what emotions we have in the expression to be all a flutter, well, this can have a kind of positive side of excitement, I'm all a flutter, and it can also have a little bit of a more negative side, the all a flutter but with nerves. In fact, these two different emotions are seen by many people as being very closely related in Gestalt therapy. They say that the only difference between excitement and nervousness or anxiety is whether or not you're supporting yourself with your breath. And so both of these emotions can be reflected in this card. So the key words that we have here include conversation and verbal communication but also perspective, if you're sat up on a branch, you get a bird's eye view. It can be about negotiations, verbal negotiations, and there is also the more sort of probably negatively seen side of communication that is gossip, um, chat, but it is also about speech and debate, and so it's another card that can be associated with interviews, for example. It's someone who is communicative and talkative, and more spiritually, we think of wise counsel, or a talking circle, or talk that is healing in and of itself. For health, we have the nerves, uh, associated with anxiety, the thyroid, the throat or voice, sleep disturbances, diabetes, and understanding the psychosomatic aspect of illnesses.